is when I look at Islam, what I see is a religion that teaches that Arab culture is superior to our own. Let me give you examples. When someone becomes a Muslim, they take on an, usually they take on an Arab name, they bow down Who to an that? Arab city, Arab they have to play Arab. in Arabic, not, they I read an Arabic like book, hospital, Arabic be. customs become normal. There's plenty of Muslims Arab. who are not Arab that start dressing like Arabs, taking Arab names, they bow to an Arab city, they go on pilgrimage to an Arab city, they have to learn Arabic. What's up? God can't Who understand you in English. Who says you have in to the do Christian that? faith, Brothers. in the Christian faith, in the Christian faith, who says you have your to do culture that? and my He's culture, whatever you, your man. culture is, whether you see it as English or something else, <laughs> your culture and my culture have equal dignity culture with Arab up, culture, with Palestinian Jewish culture. culture up, and what we are supposed to do is hey, all of us, Jews oh. and Gentiles, filter our own culture to make it a better culture, a best kind of culture. But in Islam, what we see is Arabization. You go and look at North Africa. North Africa, all those people. No, sorry, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Stop being rude. Don't interrupt. Stop being rude. Brother, focus on me. Or, or I can't so, if you're going to stop listening to me, I'll stop talking to you and I'll just go somewhere else. Well, when nobody wants to say I wasn't listening. Right. So, so please focus on me. Right. So my point to you is that you you look at Egypt. Egypt had an African culture, had an African language called Coptic. Right. It's older than Arabic, but but, but right, since since even before the time of Christ, they had Coptic as their language, and then the Muslims came in the seventh century and they impo and then Arabic became their language. Look at North Sudan. North Sudan is Nubian. They had their own culture. They had their own beliefs. I know a refugee woman, a Muslim woman, who had to flee North Sudan, and her crime was to campaign to stop an area of Nubian historical importance from being flooded by a dam that they were building in Sudan. And they were going to kill her for it. And she was a Muslim woman campaigning to defend Nubian culture. Is and They speak Arabic now and they think of themselves as Arabs. Wherever Islam dominates, Arabization follows. The Assyrians of Iraq, Arabization. The Palestinians of, of the Middle East, Arabization. Jordan, Arabization. In terms of Pakistan, you're seeing, you've got even now, there's a debate going on in Pakistan right now where Arabization is occurring in Pakistan and some people are trying to fight him. There you go. And he said nothing wrong with it. So don't talk to me about one culture being superior when as a Muslim, you end up being colonized in your mind to thinking that Arabic culture is superior to your own. No, 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 nowhere in the Quran yeah. does it say that Arab, Arab culture is superior. It says Arabs what, what, are the what, same what, what, as others, what, 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 like what the Arabs came with before, what the, that, for example, in the Arabs, the, the, their tradition before was to bury their daughters. That was an Arab culture, to bury your daughters. Having a daughter wasn't good. Mohammed people on the came and he refuted that. So when we're following, when we're doing certain things in Arabic, it's not the culture, it's the religion that we are following. Because God did not say follow Arab culture. There was many things that the Arabs were doing before that Mohammed people on him came with and he said, so don't do that, stop it. Stop what we do culturally. Just how you said, just how you said filter out culture, the Prophet Mohammed did that. I'm listening to you, I'm listening to you. So what I'm saying, is that they, they did stop that much. even when you follow Jesus I'm pretty sure you don't look at it like you're following an Israelite culture you're just following the teachings of what was sent to him by God it's like it's like Moses with, with the Israelites as well when well, they're following their own people but when certain people's following the prophets of God they're not following their culture because God hasn't set down culture to them he set that he set down divine revelation that's something that we can both understand. So it's not a cultural thing. If I am doing certain things that maybe dress in the way he dressed or certain things, then that's just the way he done it. If you knew how Jesus dressed, for argument's sake, just hypothetically, if you know how Jesus dressed, how he did his hair, how he, you might say, well, this is the man I want to follow. And you might start following that. If Jesus came every day in sandals, you might say, well, sandals look good on him. Let me just try and follow everything down to the team with him. Because he's the one that's upon divine revelation. There's nothing wrong with that, but we don't follow their culture. I don't eat Arab food. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I don't eat Israelite or, or, or Israeli. Do you know what I mean? I just do certain things because what they came with, their religion in regards to God. Second of all, I was going to say, in the Bible, it talks about the second covenant. I can't remember again, I didn't really come here to preach, but I can't remember again exactly where it says it, but I know you'll be familiar. It says that I'm going to bring a new covenant to you 
and it's not going to be the one of the people that I led Moses in the land of Egypt. It's going to be a new covenant. When he mentions that covenant, it said it's only going to be for the house of Israel. You don't have to say that, but no. do you know where it is? Do you know, right. do you know, so, do you know so, the reference I'm talking so, about? So, so let, let me reply to all your points and I'll, I will reply to that question as well. I will, I will start with that question. The, the passage that you're referring to is going to be one or two places. Yeah. If it's the Old Testament reference, it'll be in Jeremiah. If you know it's, which one, Jeremiah? I think it's, I think, I think, I think from memory I'm guessing but I think I've got a feeling Jeremiah 31 but I'm not sure could be wrong they might not even be 31 chapters in Jeremiah um, so if it's an Old Testament reference it, it might be in Jeremiah if it's a New Testament reference uh, Christ mentions the new covenant at the Last Supper where he says that this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins so those are the two references that i think about in terms of in jeremiah where he speaks about you see he says that i will establish with you israel a new covenant in which i will pour out my spirit and your sons and your daughters will prophesy now that new covenant is what jesus inaugurates in the communion but that new covenant is what he sends out his apostles into the world to teach and baptize Every, all nations and all peoples to enter into. Can so, I read it for a so, so we will come to it, yeah. So, so that that's to address that point. But the problem is, the problem is with what you're saying, is that I'm I'm willing to accept that I can't point to a verse or a phrase that says that Arabic culture is superior to other cultures. I'm, I'm willing to grant you that. But the reality is that Islam does lead to Arabization and the evidence is abundantly clear. All you need to look at it. Peace be with you, brother. Um, the, uh, the, the evidence is abundantly clear. Um, you, you see Arabization amongst societies that convert to Islam. The Assyrians were not Arabs. The, the Phoenicians were not Arabs. The, the, Philist, uh, the Palestinians were not Arabs, but they've all Arabized. The Copts were not Arabs. The Nubians were not Arabs. The Berbers were not Arabs, but they've all Arabized. So what actually happens is because you believe that Allah can only speak to you in Arabic, you have to believe by consequence that, that, that it logically follows that you must adopt Arabic as a language of prayer because Muhammad was an Arab and he is the best example in everything then normative customs and attitudes of behavior that he did not directly contradict like infanticide do become exemplars of perfect behavior and they're all Arab so that is why Islam leads to Arabization I have I have literally literally mm. had you literally heard a Muslim say that there's nothing wrong with Arabization when I said to him like when I gave these examples now where Arabization is occurring in Pakistan and some people are trying to fight him again. there you go and he said nothing wrong with it because of Arabization and he said that guy that was there he said what there's nothing wrong with that well I want to tell you that there's a better way bro whatever your culture is and I do not know claim to suggest that I know I'm going to assume that it's English because we're speaking in English and we are in London, right? That our culture, right? Assuming that, that we're sharing that is culture, right? Is, is something is that is equal to is Arab culture, that is equal to Palestinian Jewish culture. It's not that, that, again, the the, the Engli that English culture and whatever culture you claim as your own is equal to Palestinian Jewish culture, i.e. The, Jew the culture of Jesus and it is equal to Arab culture. I actually love Arabic culture. I, I really like it, I genuinely do. But my point is that in Christianity, we say that all cultures are equal. In Islam, by default, they say that you have to Arabize and Muslims do Arabize. And you, you know as well as I do, when you go to the masjid, you're seeing people who are not Arabs acting like they're Arabs. Can I, can I, can I respond to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll start with the first bit, yeah? Go on I then. I know we mentioned the stuff about Jeremiah, yeah? Yeah. Which she was right. It was Jeremiah 31. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Good to know I know some of my Bible. You do indeed. So, um, well, you it, it says, it says, it. It, says <laughs> it says, it says, verbatim. <laughs> Shall I wait for you to get it? Yes, please. Jesus no cursed in your book and you could have answered all. <laughs> Why is he cursed? <sighs> He's definitely triggered your bro, isn't he? 
Stop. Your homie's don't definitely him, triggered. Bro. Don't jump to him. Me, so, me, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. 31. 31. Ah, oh, I got it right. Guy, yeah, the passage yeah, as well, yeah. Google Google it, yeah. Google it, yeah. All right. You know what I mean? Who are you, my G? Don't talk to him like he's trying to give a finger. Okay, Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Yeah. Yeah, so go on. It says, uh, the days are coming. So this is Bible Gateway. Yep. Don't even think I'm saying anything yep. that's not of yep. Yeah, yeah, go on. So it says, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. Correct. And with the people of Judah. Yep. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors yep. when I took them by the hand yep. and led them out of Egypt yep. because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, yep. declares the Lord. Yep. This is so I'm 33 now. Yep. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel. Yep. After that time, declares the Lord, I'll put my law in their minds and I will write on their hearts and I will be their God. Yep. Don't you want me to continue or is that enough? Uh, right, so that, you make your point now. You, we've read the passage. Okay. You, you make your point from that passage right. and then I'll reply. So what I'm saying is that in the Bible, correct me if I'm wrong, there's two covenants. It says there was the one of the time of Moses. Yep. And then there's going to be a new covenant. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you don't really hear Christians talking about this three covenants. There's two. There's the old covenant, and there's the new covenant. Yeah. So if arguments take some Christians, they don't follow the Sabbath. They don't. They still eat the shellfish and stuff like that. And they say that's the old covenant. When Jesus came, he made a new one. Yes. This one is declaring a new covenant that's not going to be like the one of Moses. Yes. So this is the new covenant. Correct. The point I'm trying to make to you, Bob, is this new covenant again is only for the people of Israel. Yes. It's not for the world and everybody in it. Right. And it clearly states that in Jeremiah, which I did read to you verbatim, which you could. Yes, yes, so, yes, I read so, it. So what I'm saying is when people say Jesus is for everybody, according to this, he isn't, if they're going to claim that the new covenant came with Jesus. Yeah, yeah you're saying Right, so nations, let, let me reply and, to that. And, and, sorry, can I just mention the yeah. Arab part? I was going to say that in, I'm pretty sure you're diverse with the world and what goes on and there's many different cultures. Yeah. Like this brother, I'm assuming he's from Pakistan. Are you from Pakistan? No. Where, where are you from? Originally. Yeah, no, well, your parents. Here. No, your parents. My parents, uh, Algerian, Turkish. Okay, Algerian and Turkish. If we go to Algeria or Turkey, they've got their own way of doing things besides from the Arabs. So they've got their own traditional dish. Yep. They've got their own way of speaking. Even yep. though it might be in Arabic, they've got their own translation, their own dialect. Yep. So there's many things that he would do differently according to his culture that maybe someone that isn't Arab does. Yeah, bro. Yeah. What a bad man. So, so don't what I'm say, saying, when I do something bad to you, don't say we are all bad. Keep so going, so you know what I'm saying bro? is, even you know in Somalia, I mean, in Pakistan, on, in Turkey, in, in, in certain parts of Africa, there's ways they do things that are completely different to the Arabs. They might speak the same language, they might pray the same, and that's all well and good. But they've still got their culture, they've still got their dish, their, their food dishes, they've still got the way they, they do things culturally, yep. their weddings are different, there's yep. many different things. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not like we're just, we're just doing everything that the Arabs do. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did say, an Arab is not superior to a non-Arab, and a non-Arab is not superior to an Arab. A black is not superior to a white man, yeah. and a white man is not superior to a black man. Yeah. The only difference is in deeds, the, in, in regards to what they're doing in relation to God, how yeah. good they are on earth, how good they're following God's laws, rules and regulations. So we haven't, we, we, we accept certain things from, you know, it's cool, but we don't take in its entirety. We just pray in the same language. So if we are all from different countries, we can all pray the same, we'll understand what's going on because we have a common denominator in regards to the, the prayer, how it goes yep. and the language. So can I reply to that? Yeah, yeah, feel free. So, so I, I want to reply in full to your argument. Benita, JC, can one of you find in Romans where it says that the, we are grafted onto the vine of Israel? We're grafted onto the vine of Jesse. So in, in Luke chapter 22, yeah. right? Um, bear with me. Uh, it says, bear with me while I find it for you. Right, right. It says in chapter 22, it says, uh, reading from verse 19, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had uh, eaten, saying, this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. So that new covenant that's prophesied in Jeremiah, right? Jesus Christ is claiming that new covenant because there is only one new covenant that's prophesied in the Old Testament. It's not multiple new covenants, there's only one. And Jesus is now claiming it and he's claiming to start it. And he's starting it at this point in time, right? So the new covenant has now begun. 
that covenant that Jeremiah speaks of. And when in the book of Acts, you'll remember that uh, you're the, the Muslim trolls that were here, um, that were speak, you know, so rudely and interrupting so aggressively, they said that I was lying. When Jesus, when Jesus said these words, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven on earth. So that's clearly not just a man. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in them the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he sends his apostles into all the nations to teach and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism is the entrance uh, ritual to the new covenant, right? So Paul then goes on to say, have we found it? Romans 11, 11. Romans 11, 11. So then Romans, in, in, the, the apostle Paul says this in Romans 11, 11. Let me just find it for you. Right, it says this. I say then, didn't, I, I, Romans 11, 11, yeah? Yeah. I say then, they did not stumble so as to fall, did they? May it never be. But by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make them jealous. Now if their transgression... 17. 17, 11. 11, 17. Oh, 11, 17, sorry. So, but, but if some of the branches were broken off and you being a wild olive, so he's writing to Gentiles. This letter is writing to Gentiles. Did Paul write this? Yeah, Paul Spanish. wrote this to a Gentile church in Rome. Right, but if some of the branches were broken off, you being wild olives were grafted in amongst them and became partakers with them, them is the Jews, of the rich root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. But if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root that supports you. So he's saying that me and you as Gentiles in this new covenant, are grafted into Israel and Judah. So God establishes a new covenant with Israel and Judah, but that new covenant isn't includes the Gentiles. So the Gentiles can participate in this new covenant that is given to Israel and Judah.